The secret to a stylish wardrobe does not depend on how much you spend, it's how you work it. This is the show that rips the label of fashion. You do not need to be a fashion slave to be a style icon. Each week, I pit high street looks against designer clubber in a catwalk face-off to prove you can look gorgeous without breaking the bank. 20 quid for this whole dress. I am going to make this into the most gorgeous cocktail dress you've ever seen in your life. Tonight, fashion insider Alexa Chung talks exclusively with French fashion designer Christian Lacroix. How much does it cost to get a Couture Lacroix dress? It's a part of the secret. It's a secret. <laughs> Hello, Cardiff! <laughs> My travelling catwalk catapults to Cardiff to check out Welsh street style. <laughs> oh, look at you! And Queen of Breakfast, Teddy Lorraine Kelly, lets me loose in her dirty laundry. It's absolutely bloody horrible, it's I have to say. It's ghastly. <laughs> Welcome to my fashion fix. I'm going to be showing you all the tricks of the trade so you can look hot this summer without burning a hole in your wallet. <laughs> Now, in less than one hour's time, eight gorgeous girls are going to be strutting their funky stuff down this runway in gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. Half of them are going to be high-end designer, and half of them are going to be styled exclusively from the high street. And this fashion-hungry lot will decide which they like the best. But it's backstage that it all happens. So on this side, four girls are going to be coming out dripping in thousands and thousands of pounds worth of clothes. And on that side, Four girls will come out head to toe in High Street that I've styled for them, each outfit coming in at under £200 a pop. I want to prove to you and them that looking fabulous can be done on a budget. Tonight, it's party time with the party girl look. And my challenge is to prove you do not need a sled pay packet to look gorgeous on a girl's night out. So I'm pitting myself against four of the biggest buyers in fashion. These vixens are experts in adorning it girls in designer gear. All of the designers love designing party dresses. It's when people go a little bit to town, it's when people take a few risks, and it's when they can make beautiful clothes, uh, usually for beautiful people. Mostly, a woman wants to go to a party, and I know I want someone to come up to me and go, oh my god, I love your dress, where is it from? Rather than buying three dresses from the high street, why don't you invest in one designer outfit that would actually take you through for years. I prefer designer fashion because I like things to feel good, look good, last, and you don't always get that with the high street. So what have the fashionists picked for this week's big night out? First on the floor with her designer creation is Lena Basma. Rebecca, we're looking for something for our party girl. I think Hervé. Hervé Leger would be think? amazing, yeah. I mean, it's really sexy and it's fitted. Yeah, I love that colour too. Those dresses are absolutely a godsend. You know, they look amazing on. As soon as you slip one on, you just feel so sexy. Yeah, and they look good, these dresses on girls of all shapes and sizes, don't they? Yeah. How about some shocking pink shoes? About these. Let's see, ah, oh, those are great. I, I think love they've that. got a matching clutch bag. Oh, that's great. That's really good. I'm really, really happy with this party look, aren't you? Yeah, I think. I it's... think we've got a winner. She's going to have so much fun in this yeah. outfit. Second to strut her designer stuff is Erin Mullaney. Nowadays, you know, party dressing is about, you know, minis or, or knee length. So you're thinking about a cocktail dress um, or even a little back dress. Marius always does great dresses for parties. They're really sexy and very tight and fitted. Um, this one is one of my favorites. The detail's amazing on that It dress. looks so good on. It just, like, hugs the body and it's just incredible. I see some sparkle over here. Oh, this Marc Jacobs is great. Oh, my gosh, so cute. A little frog, I love it. This is one of the show bags. I can't believe we have any left. Ah, oh my gosh, these Balenciaga shoes. Check out the heel on that. Amazing. I think that's a great party outfit. Definitely. I'm going to wear this out tomorrow night, actually. <laughs> Marigue McKee tops us up with designer outfit number three. I mean, I just think this one looks fabulous, and I think that 
we've got um, the draping effect, yeah. which is so now. It's beautiful silk, it looks nice great at the back. We've picked um, a beautiful little lumban dress in a very, very flattering shade of taupe stroke putty that looks very expensive, but it's actually a very simple dress. It's sort of quite sexually demure. Beautiful salvage edge here, it's perfect. The shoe that launched 1,000 jealous girls at the Sex and the City premiere, perfect. The little Roger Vivier clutch, fabulously simple but gorgeous. It's a great party piece. It would take you out to a fabulous dinner. It would take you out to a great party, to a concert, to the opera, to the ballet, and you would look and feel great. And designer cocktail number four is mixed by Brick Smith Stars. The dress I've chosen is Philip Lim. Uh, Philip Lim. And the thing about this dress is it's quite sophisticated and demure in the front with this beautiful lace detail at the bottom. But in the back, we have all the drama in the world. Oh, the new Mew Mew wrinkled clutch that just came in. I see it, I see it, it's over here. So that is awesome because it, here, let's put it here. This kind of, this detail works in with this detail and it makes a beautiful texture. And this is good because you can put it through like a bracelet and then if like some creepy person comes to you, bam, at the bar, <laughs> bam. So, choose. Yes, these old favorites. There's just one more thing that we need. The perfect accessory. Gladys. Oh, darling. Oh, baby. Every rich and fabulous girl needs a Gladys in one hand and a handbag in the other. God, we'll have trouble on the high street, you know, wearing something, I don't know, from Warehouse or Miss 60 or something that's like satin and mini, mini and too tight for you. I mean, total faux pas. Please don't do it. These girls obviously like their fashion shake and not stir. Time to check out the designer competition with my fashion insider, Alexa Chan. First of all, we thought I'd scare you with a dress because, oh my God, look at the structure. Oh my God, look at the detailing. It's amazing, isn't Who it? Who is this? Maris Schwab. Oh, wow, a bit fifth element, I'm thinking. <laughs> I think this on, would look absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah. Off, it looks like it's about to turn into but a tent. But they've also sent the Mark Jacobs bag to go with it, which I think is great and very oh, party. Nice. Party, party. Right, okay, then which, which is your favourite? Hello, Love. Monsieur Philip Lim. How are you? Oh, gorgeous. You know what? He's got this one right, hasn't he? Isn't it's it beautiful. great? Beautiful. The back's oh, my, it's lovely. It's class. I know. But wait, I've scared. got something else. A surprise for you. Go on. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's a herb. Yes, that is it a herb. Is. Oh no, you're busting out the herb on party week. I know. You're oh, gonna... this is gorgeous. Isn't that amazing? Feel this how is... pleasant the material is. It's very, very pleasant. I have but to say, a bit like wearing a bandage. Also goes with a Maui necklace. Oh, they are styling up. They are styling up this week. I Isn't love this. Isn't that cool? I think yes. that's going to look really I nice. I love this. But I am feeling a bit confident, actually. As if you are. Only because... Well, then maybe this is the week that you lose. <laughs> it's not going to happen, Alexa. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> Next, I reveal how you get party girl glamour without stretching your purse strings. I need to do a little got trick, so I'm going to put it on the wrong way round. Alexis in Paris, rendezvous with French designer Christian Lacroix. Very, very beginning, I was not supposed to be a designer, I wanted to be a, a costume designer. And I dive into Lorraine Kelly's dirty laundry. This is potentially the most hideous thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire life. And if all that wasn't enough, here's this week's must-haves. Stand tall in these trendsetters. Black patent, cone-shaped, their autumn winter's sexiest heel, and hit the high street at the end of August. This short floral print A-line skirt is kitsch, cute, flirty and fun. Go on, girls, get your legs out. Like what you see, then sit tight. I'll be revealing more of this later. Looking absolutely sensational does not mean you've got to spend a fortune. Now, with just a little bit of imagination and a few key pieces, everyone can look hot this summer. It's 40 minutes to the catwalk face-off. Backstage, the party prep is in full swing. I've got to outstar the fashionista's uber-expensive designer, Clobber. The shoe that launched 1,000 jealous girls at the Sex and the City premiere. Perfect. 
280 smackers. That's more than I've got to spend on one whole outfit. It's time to hit my world. Because when it comes to party girl glamour, the high street's brimming with gorgeous frocks and frills. I'm an accessory heaven. With 800 notes, I'm shopping for four top-to-toe looks. That's shoes, accessories, dresses, the lot. So to outstyle the fashionista's designer outfits, I've got to get creative. Cue my knight in shining armour, Mr Haberdashery. The whole haberdashery scene has gone absolutely crazy. People finally are starting to make their own clothes again, and if not making them, they're starting to customise them. And it's these kind of shops that really give you all the tools for that. If you've got a simple, simple, boring dress at home and you don't want to throw it away, you don't have to go and buy another dress, just come in here and buy something like this. I mean, that around the whole edge of a dress is absolutely gorgeous. The reason why I'm here is I've got this really, really cute, very cheap dress I got from New Look. Now, this dress comes in at... 20 quid. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to give an edging around this dress. So I want black against orange. I want it to be really, really stri striking and very full on. This cocktail creation's gonna be a strong one. Let's mix up catwalk outfit number one. So already this dress is quite cute, but kind of, do you know what, a little bit boring. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off this horrible bow. And do you know what's left? A few little skags of uh, thread and a few holes. An iron will completely sort that out in seconds. I'm now going to do my asymmetric strap, which is just a little bit of ribbon in the same colour as the dress. I'm going to pin it first of all, and that will just need a couple of stitches on either side later on. I'm then going to take this bow and turn it into a design detail. And all you've got to do is just play around with it slightly and work out exactly how does it fit best. And again, just a couple of stitches later on will absolutely just put that into place. And already, I think that's completely reinvented the top section of that dress and made it look far more glam. Now, I'm going to take this lovely fringing and I'm going to place it around the dress on each side. And that will just add a tiny bit of detail and make it look far more expensive. Remember, the big designers, it's their attention to detail, which means that they can charge so much money for their clothes. There you go, lovely. Let me see. Next, I'm going to bang on the shoes, the most expensive part. What I've done is I've chosen gold ones because I want to keep it looking really nice and summery. So, now I'm going to add on the final touches, a gold and orange bangle, very, very chunky, very, very statement piece, some gold earrings to start marrying in all those colours, and then finally, a clutch bag. And this whole outfit, for £110, I think, would go to any party on a yacht in Saint-Tropez or in a club in your hometown. I think this is gorgeous. I'm in Paris for one of the most spectacular fashion events of Couture Week. The show of dramatic French designer Christian Lacroix, whose theatrical avant-garde style was rocketed to fame when Ab Fab's Eddie championed his bold look. It's Lacroix, sweetie. It's Lacroix. At the Pompidou Centre, preparations are in full swing. Already there's people that are marking out their areas, all the cameramen and all the journalists, all the photographers. Turnout is big, and I think I've spotted a dame. La Croix is, is always about fantasy and yeah. decoration and, and pushing the envelope. Um, have you, um, are you going to have your eyes on anything that you could pick up today? Will you be sharking well, for uh, items? It, I, I don't look at a fashion show in that way. I look at it as a purely uh, an art yeah. experience. Yeah. And there were you and I mere mortals thinking fashion is all about what to wear. So, where does all this art and drama come from? At the very, very beginning, I was not supposed to be a designer. I wanted to be a, a costume designer. I'm much more interested in the way uh, an actress or a customer uh, behave, attitude and gesture, yeah. than uh, just following the trend of the, of the fashion. He might think his theatrical clothes are all a bit OTT, but they often filtered down to the mainstream. It was 20 years ago that he first invented the puffball. I think that the 
clothes, especially for, for not only for girls, but for, for, for guys too, a way of um, existing by themselves and to have their own uh, personality and to be unique through uh, just a little something that your heart. Thank think. you. <laughs> a couture dress can cost anything from 10,000 to 100,000 pounds. So how much is a La Croix couture? It's a part of the secret. It's a secret, yeah. <laughs> Will you be finishing today's collection with a bridal wear? A wedding dress, of course. Yeah? The biggest wedding dress I ever made. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So, is Couture Week something Monsieur Lacroix enjoys? I hate this day. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Because such a pressure. It's uh, each time like uh, an exam, like a challenge, yeah? like being a, a, a pupil, a student. <laughs> <laughs> he has got 25 years to live up to, but once again, Lacroix's passed with flying colours. Bravo, Monsieur. Bravo. What do you enjoy about his clothes? I wore one of his dresses to the Academy Award. Actually, it wasn't one of his dresses. The dress that was made for me. And um, I think what was so spectacular about it was that it was... Um, uh, the, the artisan work in it. Was yeah. So the craftsmanship was so beautiful. I took it on the um, Oprah Winfrey show the next day after oh, okay. the Academy Awards to show her the in and the audience the inside of the dress. Yeah. Because you know, with a beautiful work of art like that, the inside is as beautiful as the outside. I'd like to get my hands on a Lacroix for myself, and after that show, I'm craving bridal. So, how much would this little beauty set you back? 6,700 euros. That's not that bad. I like this one. I'll, I'll give it a go, please. OK. Thanks. <laughs> More demure than his couture, but absolutely fabulous, sweetie. Still, I'm not sure if this looks really working for me. I'd like it if it was black. Does it come in black? It's <laughs> a shame. It's most celebs' biggest nightmare being caught on camera first thing in the morning. Well, there's one woman that has no choice, and of course that is the queen of breakfast TV, Miss Lorraine Kelly. I've headed to GMTV Studios, where Lorraine's been the UK's cornflake companion for 20 years. Oh. And you're looking absolutely wonderful. So Thank is this one of your you. outfits for TV? Yeah, yeah, I would be wearing this. I'd be wearing this a, a lot. I mean, this is just this is a wee Jane Norman number that right, I've had okay. for ages. And this, I think, is a Max Mara. This was a little bit more expensive. Right, OK. Presenting 200 breakfast shows every year for two decades, Lorraine sat on her sofa in 40,000 outfits, some of which really shouldn't have seen the light of day. Yes. Now, this is yours, so yes. what are you going to show me today, then, Miss well, Kelly? Well, I've got some howlers. Right, OK. I've got some things that I cannot bear to let go. Okay. I know this is horrendous. Right, I have to I say, actually, yes. It's awful, I yeah. know. But yeah. I just, I think because I wore it for the very, very first day of GMTV. It's absolutely bloody horrible, it's I have to say. Ghastly. It's ghastly. <laughs> <it's... laughs> Good morning. <laughs> OK, so the 80s power suits weren't Lorraine's best luck, but as time's gone on, her fashion tastes have improved. Talk to me about this, because you've got everything from your Topshop yes. to your Levutan to your Betsy Johnson. I mean, you've got a real array. And the thing about your shoes is, yeah. if you're feeling a bit lumpy and bumpy, your feet never get fat. Yeah. And those kind of shoes, I put them on and instantly I feel better. Do you start all of your own costumes? Sadly and tragically, I do. I do raids on the shops and I just right. buy a whole bunch of stuff because I'm hopeless. Um, and then I get it all back together and then I go, oh, that doesn't go. And then I've got too many skirts right. and not enough tops. Talk to me about it. So who does Lorraine turn to for a second opinion? The thing is, on the morning, I sit down and I say to all the cameramen and I say, boys, is this, are this too titty, do you think? And they'll go, no. Oh, really? So you no. asked the boys? <laughs> Which is probably completely the most stupid thing to do. I could do. just imagine you walking into a full set and saying, right, boys, am I too titty today then? <laughs> Asking the crew for fashion tips, things are desperate. This busy working mum needs some gawk time. I'm taking Lorraine and her fabulous cleavage on a shopping splurge and all I want is some gossip in return. 
Give me now a fashion secret that Lorraine Kelly has never told anyone. We did have a fashionista girl in. She she knows how she is, but she she you know remain nameless. Right. And she was very real label Mabel. You know everything had right. to be. And label I had, Mabel. Yeah, I oh, love definitely, that. definitely. Mm. And I had on a wee dress that I'd bought in Tesco's in Blair Gowdy. Right. And she asked me where it was from, and I said Gucci, and she believed me. <laughs> Today, then, I've got a little bit of a challenge for you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I'm going to give you five minutes... Right. ..to run around the floor... Oh, okay. ..and I want you to pull some outfits for me. And do you know what? And if I love... Yes. ..love, love, love what you've chosen... Yeah. ..I might buy it for you. <gasps> Starting... ..now! Ooh. Go! <laughs> oh, careful! <laughs> Penny's off. That's too wee, that's too big. Oh. That's quite big for telly. It's too wee, it's too wee. Ooh! Yeah, yeah. Oh, cost is good, cost is good. Right, okay. <laughs> Stop shopping! Come with me. <laughs> okay, so how has LK today got on? Would you really wear that on the sofa? No, maybe not. It's the colours you went for, isn't it? Yes. So you've yes. been programmed. There, that's a bit kind of World War II. Yes, and I think you would look stunning in this. I do like that. But I have to say, your little winner for me was this one. Yeah, I like that one. I like that I one. Two outfits out of ten, not bad. So how do they look? Changing rooms. <laughs> And maybe it's a wee tiny bit big. It's a bit Just too a big. tiny bit big. It's one of those dresses that's a bit better on the hangar. <laughs> I like this. I think, this I is really think cute. you look gorgeous. You I get? love I this. I it up properly. By just putting on the belt on and covering up that, uh, that little bow, Ooh. I reckon, you see, you'll be able to reinvent this every single time so it will look slightly different. Do you know what I have to say? It's 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 youth enhancing. Yes. Because yes. it's the colour, because it's quite vibrant and we know that colour's a big thing this season. You could wear it all week. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Lorraine looks great in green, but I've got a feeling she's about to turn a shade of red. Good, good. Thank you. What is your biggest fashion faux pas ever in your entire oh, life? Oh, jeez. Oh, I know. Uh, I worked at TVAM at the time, right. and the boss had this thing that we all had to look um, eternal summer. Right. Lots and lots of colour. So I came upon this jacket, and it had every bright colour under the rainbow in this jacket. Lime green, orange, pink, purple, I think, was in there. Big Big, huge shoulder pads and big buttons. I thought I looked OK. Oh, really? And, and what designer was it? I think it was Adina Ron Rona. Adina Rona? I yeah. love Adina Rona. Yeah. I really love Adina oh, Rona. No! So would it possibly? Oh, no! Could it possibly? Is that my jacket? This, oh, no! We, are, we have hunted I'm high so sorry. and low for this jacket. Isn't it Look awful? at this. All the years. And I've seen some mistakes and I've seen uh -huh, some uh -huh. amazing things. I'm sorry. This is potentially... <laughs> the most hideous thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire I life. Know, I don't know oh, whether that would ever have been in fashion. I don't think you'll get any worse than that. Right. Let's I'm have a little this. look at this. Oh, Now, I'm can so we funny. see this? <laughs> you are horrible. You, you look like you've just had a really good poo. <laughs> <laughs> so you look like you've just had a poo. Look what I've just done. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's the worst right. thing ever. But you see this waistcoat? It's a transfer. It's not even a real waistcoat. <laughs> I didn't realise it had this really <laughs> lovely sort of watch thing going on. Where would you buy something like this? <laughs> Honestly. I don't know. They must have seen me coming. Right, OK, so now I have this just here. Yes. So this is a little tartan skirt. Tell me the history behind this. My wee skirt, I've worn that quite a lot. But I have to say, I can't really wear it anymore. I right. Think, I think it's just... I think there comes a time in your life when, sadly, you have to say no to the mini kilt. Right, OK. Which well, is you, a shame. Do you know what? Well, thank you for that. Who in this studio audience would like to own <laughs> Miss Lorraine Kelly's very own tartan gym skirt? <laughs> there we go. Who's first, then? Is that you, darling? What's your name? Caroline. Come here, Caroline. You've got ten seconds. So, get in there and... Ten, nine... Okay, you ready, guys? Ten, nine, eight, seven, oh, six, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Is that done up? Yes. Oh, what do you reckon, Lorraine? It's your call. I think she's done really well because she took her trousers off 
and then put the skirt on and it's nearly, nearly there. I, I would give her it. Would I, you? I would. Lorraine Kelly, would you? Let's give it to her! Yeah. 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 Time's ticking to the catwalk face-off. For my second party girl outfit, I'm going to jazz up this dress and create a dance floor dazzler. So we've got our base here, which is just a plain pair of black tights. The next layer is just this simple shift on top with a big ruffle detail on the chest plate. And this whole kind of costume thing is so sexy and so gorgeous. So now I've got this black dress. Now, lace detail, really very beautiful, but of course I need to do a little gop trick. So I'm gonna put it on the wrong way round, back to front, because the scoop back line is gonna be great for exposing all of the details on the top underneath. And do you know what? No one's gonna know that that is not on the right way round. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this necklace, which, as you can see, if I put it on as a necklace, there's just too much going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to literally put in a couple of stitches and I'm gonna attach it to the dress. And it's literally a case of stitching through in black threads. You don't need to even need to be that neat about it. So that's building up the look. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fabulous little brooch and I'm gonna place that on the centre of this top just here. I've got a pair of shoes, now quite inexpensive. I'm going to take the ribbon out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the tongue and I'm going to feed the ribbon back through because I need to be able to do the shoes up. I'm now going to get these gorgeous earrings with these dangly bits on and I'm literally going to pierce the tongue of the shoe. Now, let's pop that one on. I'm just going to do that bow up and I'm going to hide the bow inside the shoe. Now, finally, a few more gems, a ring and a big old pair of glam earrings. And this for me is gothic chic from the high street at its very best. Coming up, I hunt down the best of Welsh street style. Hello, Cardiff! <laughs> Will High Street head Lorraine Kelly spot the cheap cashmere in my five of the best? Oh, is this it? here. Don't Disney. touch her breast, Ray. <laughs> That's not in our contract. No, no, no. And I create more knockout outfits at knockdown prices. And to me, that is absolutely the cutest little accessory. I've been trawling the country in search of a new UK style icon because real individual style is simply out on the streets. I'm setting up stage in seven of the UK's biggest cities, selecting who I think are Britain's best. This week, I'm loving and leaving England for Wales. I'm in Cardiff. Here, the people love their rugby, love their music and love their country. But do they love their fashion? The star bus has arrived. Cardiff, show me what you've got. How you doing? Good hair. Yeah. Are you coming down to my catwalk? Well, if you're happy. Have you got all dressed up? Do you know what? I am loving. <laughs> and when I mean loving, I am loving your style. You are so hot. Have you got all dressed up for it? Yeah, pretty much dressed up. No, I'm loving it. So would you normally go out in the street in this in the daytime? Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. I want to know why. Why are you not in there? Well, You've yeah. obviously made a clear effort today. Why are you not in there? Do you like your so, style? Um, yeah. Sign up right now. Why are you not in that queue? I'm shy. Do you know what? You look gorgeous. Thank you. I like the use of layering. I like the mixture of textures. I like the fact that you've got two different floral prints. Amazing. Get in that queue. Go on. That queue. OK, how long did it take you to do your hair? Um, About an hour. I bet it took you an hour to do your hair, yet you've not signed up to go on that runway. No. Right, get over there no. and get to that runway. Go on, get over. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Come on. Come on. Come. Hello, Cardiff! <laughs> Should we start the runway? Yeah! Okay, cue music. In the land of a thousand voices, the Musos catapulted my catwalk competition into action. This little lot translate their favourite sound into their favourite look. Rock chick, rockabilly punk, and rockabilly pinup. And to prove Cardiff sings more than one tune, the indies work their walk and hit the right notes. I got this hat from H&M. I got this bought for me, got this from Top Man, decent blue banana. 
these with top hats. These boys and girls are united the unisex. Blowing away boundaries, they take the tricks and trends of the opposite sex and make their luck their own. I really enjoy making my own clothes, either from scratch or buying uh, t-shirts and just screen printing on them. I've just bought a heat press, which is kind of cool, so you can do anything instantly. The rainbow has arrived. Cardiff's Colour Brigade ticked off every key colour trend for this summer. Treating colour more reservedly are the Toastly Tonals. They bridge their look from head to toe and by clever selection create complete looks that are stylish and sophisticated. Lovely, lovely. These catwalk queens are trend turners. They go out of their way not to conform. You scare me. Some cute, yeah. some crazy, oh but all characterful. Set to prove Cardiff's finger is firmly on the fashion pulse, here come the Trendtastics. Our oh, first high waist of the day! Well done! High waist wide leg trousers are bang up to date, but every flavour of this season's must have fashion is on show. From metallics to bow blouses, there isn't a craze Cardiff isn't carrying. Cardiff's delivered a cracking collection of affordable individual style and six Welsh wonders stood out. Jennifer Bates has carefully crafted this look from her hair colour all the way down to her feet. Richard Flynn also impressed me with his mix of high street and high end. Justina Mello has showed off her sassy street style. She's not afraid to use some colour to show off those curves. Brian Stewart's look is heavily influenced by his musical taste. He's thrown his outfit together and added a flash of pink to give it that extra edge. While Sam Turner's clever use of clashing colours makes her stand out from the crowd. And finally, there's Jo Schofield. Her 1940s look is a complete package. She works that vintage style with ease. A gorgeous medley of street style, but only one can go through to my London final. So, today I crown... You, my lovely, as the winner! I think what you did today is a quite a masculine look, including the hair, but you pulled it off with touches of femininity, all right? But you know what? You would stand out in a crowd. As far as I'm concerned, it's all expressed. So give it up for the winner, Cardi! Not long till the catwalk face-off rocks my runway. With their unlimited budget, the designer side have created some cracking party girl outfits. I have to better their stunners with just £200 a bomb. For my third party girl look, I'm going for maximum flirt effect with a short skirt and a killer pair of heels. Most of my budget on this outfit went on these shoes, which you know what, they are so killer and so amazing. These can make any outfit work. So, I love this top. Absolutely gorgeous, loads and loads of pleating. It's really, really simple. The reason why this outfit's gonna work is because there is a most definite clash, but also a marriage between the bronze and the purple on the skirt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all start with this necklace. And you could just tie it on like that as it's supposed to be in a nice ribbon. I think we can make it look better. So I'm gonna take off this ribbon. And what I'm gonna do is pin the necklace onto the actual top. And later on, I will stitch this on, but just so you can see it now, I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in. It's a really, really soft leather, so a needle will go through it very easily. A lot of big designers, Prada, Miu Miu, uh, Burberry, have all done heavy, heavy embellishments. And do you know what? Instantly, this top looks more expensive. Now, with this belt, instead of putting it on the right way around, I want to turn it into a little bum bag. So what I'm gonna do first of all, turn it round the wrong way. If you could just hold the back of there for me, Georgie. Thank you. And then later on, I will stitch on some belt loops. Really easy, bit of old satin, but just for the purpose of speed, I'm gonna show you how it's gonna sit. And to me, that is absolutely the cutest little accessory. Behind these five doors, I've got five gorgeous girls all wearing some cashmere. Come on, girls, come on out and see Auntie Lorraine. Lovely. Okay. 
Aren't they beautiful? Gorgeous. Isn't it lovely, honestly? Mm. So now I want to know whether you can work out what is the cheapest top and what is the most expensive top, oh, all right? right? Okay, so here's a couple of stickers here. Go right. up and tell me what you're looking for. Right, okay. All right, all right. Well, I'm, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling it how, that's actually, that's a wee bit rough. Although oh, this it? here. Don't me. touch our breast, Lorraine. <laughs> that's not in our contract. No, no, no. But that, that there's really cute. So right. I think that looks quite expensive. Yeah, there's so. a lot of detail in it as well. Oh, mm, mm, mm. oh no. How soft? That's not all that soft. No? It's not as soft as this one. Right. And it's also quite kind of boring. Not sure about this one. I think it's a bit old wifey. Okay. I so think this is very expensive, this right. one. Right, okay, why oh, do you think it's expensive? It's so soft. It's oh, so you think that one's the most expensive? Me. I think okay. that's the most expensive. Okay. So or the red one is the least expensive. Okay, why the red one cheap? The red one is cheap because it feels rough and it's quite boring and straightforward. Right. That one, because there's a lot, it just feels so gorgeous. gorgeous it just feels really red. lovely. And I like the way that, you know, the kind of two-tone sleeves going on it's there. There's some sweet, work being done it? there. So, girls, please rearrange yourself in order of where you should be. Cheaper this side, more expensive on that side. Go, girls! Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't right, okay. Because you should have gone with your gut instincts there, okay? I know, I did think yeah. that one was dealer. You know, and it comes in at 419 quid. Yow. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Too painful for many a purse, Lorraine, but it's a sexy baby from Queen and Belle for 419. For £245, Granny Chic is back at PPQ. Stop him dead in red with Cash Car for 115. This cashmere cutie comes in at 79 quid from Gap. And cuddle up with Florence and Fred for 35 smackers. And yeah. this one now, the one that you thought was the most expensive, this one comes in at 79 pounds from Gap. Fabulous. This one that you thought was yes. the cheapest, yes. pure cashmere. <laughs> Right. I know nothing. From a company called Kashka, which okay. specialise in cashmere, I believe. Right, they're going to love me. Right? <laughs> so I can officially declare LK today, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. bog all mm -hmm. about fashion. Give it up for the Ray Kelly! <laughs> The fashion face-off is five minutes away. With 800 precious pounds, I've got to outstyle full drop dead gorgeous designer outfits. The pressure's on, so for my last party girl look, I've really got to go to town and a teeny bit over budget. We've got a really cute little dress here. Now, it comes in at 100 pounds from the high street, which I think is quite expensive. But you know what, there's so much detailing going on, I can see where they spent the money. But what it does need is it needs a lot more volume. So. This underskirt you can get from a load of different places in most cities now. What I've done is I've literally taken a thread into this and I've pulled it all the way through to the top and pulled it and it's just basically ruched it all up. And what it does, it just gives this whole skirt a load more volume and makes it feel a lot more party. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the shoes because these shoes need to be a statement piece. So with these amazing corsages that I absolutely love, I'm literally going to decorate the shoe using the pin that's on there already. When you are buying your clothes only from the high street, you know that if you're going to buy a dress like this one that Brit's wearing right now, there's going to be probably about another 300 people in the country that have bought the same dress and wearing it exactly the same way. It's these finishing touches that just reinvent it every single time and it allows people to look slightly different. Now, this for me is ruining the whole dress. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to unpick with a picker. Never ever trust yourself with scissors because you don't want to cut the material, and these pickers are just absolutely great. Right, so I'm going to take this, but I'm not going to throw it away because I do want to use it. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to stuff this into the dress. Excuse me, Britt. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see there, that now comes up, copying how this dress is cut, and then it flops down over the top, which makes it feel quite 80s, but quite glam, and there's no stitching involved at all in the slightest. Then I'm going to take this waist cinching belt, because I don't want to see any of this join now. What I'm going to do, this at the moment, this belt's too thick for me, so I'm going to turn a little bit of it in. Absolutely gorgeous. Then finally, to really work on these shoes, I've got two little bits of ribbon. I'm just going to tie them around the ankle to help balance out the amount of flowers on the back. This, to me, is looking absolutely glam. When you think about going to a ball or when you think about going out on a big girl's night out, do you know what, why not let loose? Who wants to do 
rock t-shirts and skinny jeans anymore when you can have this kind of look. Hot stuff, let me buy you a drink. Backstage is pulsating with final preparations for the party girl face-off. OK, so we're just trying to shoehorn Tracehan into this dress, <laughs> even though she's the size of a small child, so is this dress. So, yeah, I think this, for me, is the ultimate party dress. It's tight and sexy. It's so oh, hot. So... And the colour's amazing as well. Do you feel good in it? I feel great. Do you feel ready to party? I do. I love it. The high-end party girls are sweet and sorted. On the high street side of stage, I'm still sewing. OK, this is absolutely the part of the show, ow, oh, that I hate the most. And also, I've now gone over budget on this frock because this zip was on show and it completely ruined the whole dress. So I've put those corsages down, which means this dress now comes in at 220 quid. I've got three girls ready. One isn't dressed yet. We're still stitching on something on the top. It's absolute craziness. I'm really, really scared this week because those dresses over there are absolutely phenomenal. So let's hope to God that these designs are going to titillate the audience more than the designers. Next, the party girl face-off. But will it be designer or high street who celebrates? Wow, interesting. OK. It looks like a landslide this week. So I hope this lot are in the mood for a party because tonight's theme is the ultimate girls' night out. Backstage, eight party girl looks are having their final touches for the face-off. On their limitless tab, the fashion vixens have pulled out four sparkly party girl designer outfits. We've picked um, a beautiful little lumban dress. I mean, I just think this one looks fabulous, and I think that we've got um, the draping effect, which is so now. We chose Hervé Leger because those dresses are absolutely a godsend. As soon as you slip one on, you just feel so sexy. Marius always does great dresses for parties. They're really sexy and very tight and fitted. It looks yes. so good on. It just, like, hugs the body. The dress I've chosen is a Philip Lim black cocktail dress. And the thing about this dress is it's quite sophisticated and demure in the front with this beautiful lace detail at the bottom. But in the back, we have all the drama in the world. Are we going to have some high on it? Well? Yes. Party Girl is an ultra-glam image. But I'm hoping with just 800 quid, I've infused enough fizz into my four high street outfits to give the label looks a run for their money. But before the audience chooses their fashion face-off favourite, here's more of my must-haves. Individually woven by tribes in Vietnam, this bag is unique, colourful and ethically made. Gorgeous and I love it. This tops in store in two weeks' time, so nab one quickly. Fashionable bow detail, seductive in silk, it will make your friends green with envy. Statement necklaces are big news, and this one's a headliner. Art Deco shape, waterfall strand detail, and just 18 quid. This is high street fashion at its best. Wow, exciting. All the final touches are being made to the models. They all look beautiful. Yeah. We're on the design side right now, but obviously we're going to send the models out in random order so the audience won't know which is which. So they won't know who the designer dresses are and they won't know which models got cast styled. At the end of the catwalk show, the audience will be asked to vote for which side they prefer. It's a tough one this week, I think. All the girls look great.
eight party girl outfits, only one side can win. Will the audience prefer my high-hemmed high street honeys or the designer's leggy label looks? show pretty exciting those are eight party wear looks all very nice I think you'll agree now's the exciting bit you get to vote for which side you prefer so I'm gonna ask you to hold up your pink card if you prefer this side and if you like this side please hold up your black card like this Wow interesting okay oh my god it looks like a landslide okay everyone thank you so much for voting I can now reveal that this side, the pink side, is actually the designer side, and so this side is the high street side. And the results are, with an overwhelming majority, the black side is one. So <laughs> this side, which side am I? Black side? Which side am I? Is that my side? Oh, it's my side, oh God. I had no idea at all which colour I was, so when you turned around and said that, who's one, who's one? So, Alexa, come on, tell me how much did all the designer clothes come in at? OK, they came in at, uh, well, I think it's fine. £8,368? Eight that right, OK, then. Well, my side came in at £725 and two pence! Yeah! <laughs> but I have to say... I think all of us will agree there are eight amazing looks on the runway tonight and it just goes to show it doesn't matter how much money you've got to spend, everybody deserves to look fabulous. Yay! <laughs> Next time, Alexa meets Enfant Terrible of Fashion, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Well, on a fait une dernière fois. It looks like it's stressed. I confront Lulu with her dirty laundry. Oh, Oh, look at this one, and now a blue one. And the fashionists pull out all the stops. It's over for Gok. We're going to beat him. As we go head to head with red carpet glamour. How much is that bracelet? 69,000. 69,000. Are yeah. you letting your dog sit on it? I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>